Welcome back into the studio and the February edition of 12 and 12, 430. I don't really know what I'm gonna do. I do have some papers out. This is some old, I don't know, it's really thin. It kind of reminds me of my beloved Ikea paper, but this has been wrapped around Christmas ornaments for years and I got a new system for storing my Christmas ornaments. So I could not throw it away because it was too delicious. It's very thin, very old. And then I have this piece of uh, paper that was an under paper. Um, I have pre-gessoed my pages. I did put some um, tape in the um, signature seam because I did have some bleed through from this one, which I was worried I might have with this type of paper. Um, this is not watercolor paper. It's more like a, a very thin mixed media paper, um, but it is holding up surprisingly well. So now uh, let's get started. I'm gonna do some decoupage is where I'm gonna start. So let's get started. So this tissue paper isn't really like the Ikea paper in that it doesn't disintegrate. It was very, much, very cool. I got some awesome wrinkles out of it, as you can see here. Um, but like I said, it doesn't kind of disintegrate and leave that gappiness like I love about that Ikea paper. But this was a real good find. Um, you know, be a hoarder. Go for it. Usually when I go in with the Stabilo Woodies, I kind of come behind it with my spray bottle, but for some reason I was led to like smear it with my fingers and get it into the wrinkles. Um, I wasn't really thrilled with it once I looked at it before I started doing this decoupage. Um, with this under paper but in the end I'm glad that I did go in with that green because it really brought that background together with this these pieces that I'm about to decoupage because that darker green is in that paper and that's why I grabbed that color green's not usually my go-to although it is my favorite color it's not usually the one I feel comfortable with um, when I'm arting it's something I need to overcome Now you're gonna see me coming in with a towel periodically as I'm laying down this um, bright uh, yellow green. And I am doing that because I want it 
to have really bright points so I want it to kind of be a gradation so I have a really intense area of a uh, high pigment um, this color is also semi-transparent so I wanted, wanted to really maximize that so that's why you see me kind of pulling it back on the edges a little bit and um, and now I'm just going in with that Lyra graphite it's a water soluble graphite um, like crayon almost and I know that this is going to go more of a graphite color not so dark as it is when it's wet um, and you'll see that um, I am then a then go in with some black to pop and make that more intense something I really did like about what was happening here um, and I was very much noticing it was the graphite was starting to pull and progress over to where those black stencil lines were from the um, under paper that I had there and I really liked that um, the other thing I was really pleasantly surprised by with in here it was that this is one of my carved December stamps I think it was organic and I, I I don't know what led me to go stamp a second time just next to the first one but I really liked how that um, turned out so I kept going with it um, and of course I do go in and cover some of that up with the black when I go in but i wasn't really much of a loss with that. That's okay. It needed it. And I'm being pretty vigorous with my um, palette knife here because I want to see some of that, what's going on underneath. And hence why I bring the towel in um, so I want it to catch the texture. I do want some dark areas, but I also want to see the bottom layers kind of popping through. Um, I know that this is, has lots going on in it and I wanted to use some black to bring, kind of bring it together. So I get that good and dry and um, I'm going to go in with some gesso, white gesso, and basically I'm doing the same thing. I'm bringing some areas to the forefront where I'm putting that white gesso down, just like I pushed some other areas back with that black paint. Doing the same thing I did with the black, I'm trying to catch the texture with my finger and pull back and make some areas translucent while others are very opaque. Um, I'm not dry brushing here. I am being much more heavy handed than I usually am um, because the, the, the texture is more subtle in this one. Um, and really, I just wanted things to come forward, whereas with the black, I wanted things to be pushed back. So I'm feeling kind of pressured for time here and I need to get the hut just so dried down and I need to figure out a sentiment. Um, so I've laid down my heat tool and pulled out my word tote. Um, and I'm going through some stuff and in January I had gotten my gift that was made for me by Kristen Van Valkenberg. And um, she had given me all these awesome little cutouts of just words, random words out of text. And there was a whole bunch of them. And I picked one up and there it was. Oh, we shall have plenty. And I felt like this was just plenty. There was lots going on on this page. So I was trying some bits on the background. They did not work. So I pulled out some resin. Um, this is actually paper bag craft bag that I resined and I felt that like that really worked there was something about it I liked I don't know though there's no 
brown tones in this. Um, but I liked the glossiness, which is usually something I don't like. So I laid that down, but I knew it needed something more. And at, at this point, I really don't know what that is. So I'm going to just get it laid down in um, where I've selected it to go. And then it hits me. Um, I'm seeing some, like right by where the spine is down at the bottom, I see some really thin black lines in there that were on the the pink decoupage paper that I had laid down. And um, so I decided to go for accentuating that. So like I had put down the gel, I was like, oh yes, I know what I need, thread. So I ran to my sewing machine, grabbed my thread. I'm like looking at the timer. I don't know why it stresses me out so much, but I, it did and I, but I got that down and but then I just was like, you know what? I need to pull that in in other areas. So I got my food ball pen and um, came in and did some, I don't know. I don't know if you want to call this mark making, acemic writing, but I get to the very back end of the pen and I just scratch scratch with the pen and mimic the kind of thread-like black marks that were on the page. And by that point, I didn't care if that timer ran out. I was, I felt like I brought it together. I felt a sense of accomplishment. As always, down in the description box, I have a list of all the supplies used, as well as where you can find me on other social media. And, also, please know that there are links listed with the supplies I've used. Um, these are either to my Etsy store or to an affiliate link. And I only link to products that I have used, tested, or prefer to use. I may receive a small compensation, but there is never any additional cost to you. So using the links really helped me put supplies on my art table and keep my channel content coming to you. Thank you. Please take the time to like this video if you do and subscribe if you haven't.